is a presentation of WGN Sports. Another cool evening here on the north side, but a beautiful afternoon. Should be a nice night for baseball. Wind blowing in once again. And we are inside Wrigley Field as WGN Sports presents Chicago Cubs baseball. And tonight it's game two of a three game series as the Cubs look for their third consecutive win. And hi again, everyone. Alongside Bob Brendley, I'm Len Casper. The Cubs trying to get to within a game of 500. Meanwhile, the Astros have lost six in a row, and they're two and 20 on the road. And as you look at this matchup tonight, should be a good matchup for Jeremy Burnitz, even though he's facing a future Hall of Famer. Yeah, normally guys don't look forward to facing uh, future Hall of Famer Roger Clemens, but Jeremy Burnett swinging a hot bat lately. Big home run in the ball game last night in that matchup on April 29th with uh, Greg Maddox against the Rocket down in Houston. Jeremy with a big home run in that ball game. Unfortunately for the Cubs that was the last home run that the Rocket has given up so far this season only two home runs on the entire year against the right hand and you look at his numbers against the Houston Astros the Cubs the last two games both wins with eight runs seven of their eight runs have come via the home run over the last two games well let's talk about Roger Clemens 42 years old he just seems to get better and better every year and it's really unusual because he's a power pitcher and he's still a power pitcher relies on a high four seam fastball a split finger fastball an occasional sinking fastball you see the numbers in that matchup against Maddox down in Houston and the Astros haven't scored runs for any of their pitchers but especially for the Rocket they've been shut out three times with Roger Clemens on the mound. Sergio Mitre will make his first big league appearance this year but as you see some previous major league experience. And I think that's why Sergio Mitre was selected from the minor leagues to make this start tonight. He's been out on the bum before. Uh, he shouldn't be bothered at all by the pressure. Cubs have gotten great outings from their starters lately. We'll see how Mitre fares tonight. We'll have game two of this series Astros and the Cubs next. Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. The Illinois Lottery. No matter how you play, play the Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. Pepsi, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball and the Chicago Cubs. Comcast. Catch the Cubs home games on WGN and HDTV on Comcast. Call for a great offer. And by Southwest Airlines, nonstop service to 59 destinations all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Wednesday, the two-hour season finale. A One Tree Hill so big. <laughs> it will take a full night to tell. And before it's all over, one of them. I finally see you for the pathetic, broken man you are. Lemonade? will get their revenge. Game over. The two-hour season finale. One Tree Hill. Wednesday night at 7 on WGN. Chicago's WB. All right, here's one. You're stranded on the island. Name three things that you want with you. A beautiful woman, an endless supply of Bud Light, and oh yeah, another beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> Not until he builds he the raft. He said he build the raft yesterday. Girl, he but said that he was going to bring home something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got to work on my fantasies. Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. Now this is what I'm talking about. It's all here. Some cars are just born to follow. One-dimensional, charisma-free. This car has a different vibe. It takes any road you throw at it and everything you throw in it. Runs fast between lights and long between fill-ups. Give it a destination and go where the vibe takes you. With available cash back and hot button bonus cash, a new vibe starts around 15.7. Non-GM owners and lessees get a new vibe for around 14.7. Hot button bonus cash on all Pontiac models ends May 31st. Discover Aquafresh Extreme Clean. Its microactive foam gets into hard to reach places, seeking out sources of bad breath, even in the pores of your tongue, leaving your teeth and tongue so refreshingly clean, you can't help feeling a change. Won't you come over, girl? 
because I want you to. Yeah, Aqua Fresh Extreme Clean. Take the feeling of clean to the extreme. And we are underway tonight. Ball one from Sergio Mitre to Willie Tavares, the Astros center fielder. Game two of this three game set. The Cubs a winner last night, four to one. Ramirez in at third. Tavares runs very well, and he leads the majors with 17 infield hits. Wind and the pitch is bounced foul past third. One and two on Tavares after him. Todd Self, the right fielder, and then Craig Biggio. Ball in the dirt out in front of home, but no swing, according to the crew chief John Hirschbeck. Down at first, Wally Bell is a home plate umpire tonight. And we'll get you the rest of the Astros lineup here momentarily. Sergio Mitre with his 16th career appearance and a le uh, 12th, rather, big league start. Driven to right center, and Hairston will run it down. Jerry Hairston in the lineup in center. Was well, going to be in at second, but he's in center for Corey Patterson. More on that in a moment. And the rest of the Astros lineup as written out by Phil Garner. Self Vigio Berkman two through four. Mike Lamb at first has one home run this year. It was a grand slam against Mark Pryor. Ensberg, Everett, Osmus, and Clemens. Roger Clemens hitting 333. Pitch to Todd Self, a strike on a 90 mile an hour fastball. And a 6'4, 210 pound Sergio Mitre. See his numbers at AAA Iowa this season. Very important that he gets off to a good start here, get his legs underneath him, get a little confidence going in the first inning. As I mentioned in the opening of the show, I, you wouldn't figure nerves to be a factor. This is a guy that's been out there. He's pitched in the major leagues before, although very limited time in the major leagues, but. He's got good enough stuff to win at this level. He needs to have good command of all of his pitches tonight. He's also pitched against future Hall of Famers. I mean, he's facing Clemens tonight, but in his big league debut, he faced Greg Maddox when Maddox was an Atlanta Brave. That was an 0-3. Pop foul by Self, and it's Ramirez with just enough room. Take a look at our Pepsi defense brought to you by Pepsi, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball and the Cubs. Du Bois, as uh, Len mentioned, Harrison, Jerry Harrison Jr. in center tonight. Jeremy Burnett's in right. Ramirez, Perez, Enrique Wilson getting his first start for the Cubs at second base. Derek Lee over at first. And Michael Barrett back behind the plate again for Sergio Mitre. So Enrique Wilson with his first start as a Cub. And a late addition to the lineup, Corey Patterson, a late scratch. His uh, left wrist bothering him after a collision in the outfield last night with Jeremy Burnett's. Vigio bounces it to short. Afi Perez fires to Lee, and it's a 1 2 3 opening inning for Sergio Mitre. Roger Clemens to the hill when we come back. destination smell introducing Southwest Airlines new nonstop service to Pittsburgh fly from Chicago Midway for just twenty nine dollars one way you are now free to move about the country I'm no car expert but I know what I want you know what I want more bang bang for my buck that's why we got a Forenza 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 wagon by Suzuki Suzuki during Suzuki's more bang for your buck sales event more and more people are discovering Forenza wagon with more room and more features than the Ford Focus wagon plus it comes with the peace of mind of America's number one warranty more bang for my buck he says he can't have it all Suzuki get more bang for your buck with 1.9% APR and 1,000 customer cash on Forenza wagon now
Well, the fans still filing in for this one tonight as we check out Dusty Baker's Cubs lineup brought to you by Pepsi, the official soft drink of MLB and the Cubs. Hairston, Perez, and Lee at the top. Jeremy Burnitz, Aramis Ramirez, Michael Barrett moving up in the lineup tonight with Corey Patterson out. Jason Dubois in left. Again, Enrique Wilson, a switch hitter with his first start as a Cub. And Sergio Mitre's two for seven in his big league, two for 17 in his big league career. Take a look at the Astros defensively. Lance Berkman moves from first base to left field tonight. Willie Tavares in center field gunned down three Cubs at home plate in that series down in Houston. Todd Self in right field. Morgan Ensberg at third. Adam Everett at short. Craig Biggio at second base. Mike Lamb getting a start tonight at first base and Brad Osmus the veteran catcher behind the plate for the future Hall of Famer Roger Clemens. He has not allowed a run on the road 21 consecutive scoreless innings on the road. Most in the majors to start a season since he went 21 and a third scoreless innings in away games to start the 97 campaign for the Blue Jays. And Jerry Harrison jumps all over the first pitch and a slicing fly ball out of play. Jerry's had a lot of at-bats against Roger Clemens, He's bo both formerly in the American League. Jerry's six for 24 against Clemens. The Rocket is two and three with a 3.89 ERA and six starts against the Cubs in his career. He's 0 and 1 this year. Greg Maddox beat him three to two. And Minute Maid Park on April 29th. We talked about that home run that Jeremy Burnitz hit in that ball game, the last one that Clemens has given up this season. The other one came in his very first start of the year against the Cincinnati Reds. Out in the bullpen. Everyone just getting comfortable in each bullpen, <laughs> and that's, that's the last thing guys want down there. They've got their feet propped up, they've got their. Uh, Water cups, sunflower seeds all set up. You see, they've got an invader down there, Roy Oswald, sitting down there on the chair in front of the bench. He's not even supposed to be down there. Starting pitchers need to get a special invitation to go to the bullpen. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. That's a very exclusive club down there. They just don't let anybody come sit in the bullpen. You have to ask permission to go down there. Tapper foul on the ground. Yeah, the reason I brought up the home runs that Clemens has given up this year, only two, wind blowing straight in tonight. So the home run ball doesn't figure to be a factor in the scoring tonight. Of course, you never know. We've seen some balls fly out of here with the wind blowing straight in, but this could be one of those nights where the Cubs are going to be tested in their ability to manufacture runs. Another one, two, and that one just missed. Talking about Roger Clemens and the approach against him with one of the Cubs hitters. And he said, gotta be aggressive because Clemens is aggressive. Hurston hanging in there. Now Clemens is a guy that you can be pretty sure you're going to get a fastball in a fastball count. Two and oh, three and one. He may throw a two seamer from time to time but more often than not he's going to go to his four seamer as you see where he ranks on the all time strikeout list. But once you get to two strikes against Clemens you have to deal with that split fingered fastball by far his best pitch at this stage in his career. Here he comes on a two two and a comebacker and an easy play for Clemens and it's out number one. I was a little distracted by that guy with the circa 1980 Astros jersey right behind home plate at the rainbow jersey on. Wow. The uh, Terry Poole special. I saw enough of those. Enos Cabell. Those jerseys remind me of the Astrodome. I mean, I, the jersey doesn't even bother me as much as the Astrodome did. I, <laughs> I could live with an ugly jersey, but uh, boy, playing in that Astrodome six times a year was murder. The orange hats. <laughs> Well, if you had, had if you had the the Marlins when they started with the teal hats against the orange of the Astros, you'd be blinded. Two strikes on Nafi Perez as a Chicago Cub. He has hit 307. 
<laughs> the muted orange T-shirt that the Cubs had. Outside. You know, those bright colors, and of course, a lot of teams back in that era had the the blue, you know, the baby blue road jerseys. Most teams now with gray, a little more muted. And the center for Nafi Perez. The first base runner tonight. Nafi goes down, gets one. Sometimes you just got to go down and dig it out. A fastball down below the knees lines and right back up the middle of the field. That's one thing against Clemens. You can't try to do too much. Just take what he gives you. If he's going to work you away, shoot the ball to the opposite field. That ball was down the middle of the plate and down low, and Nafi went right back up the middle of the field. Derek Lee is 7 for 17 against Clemens in his career. Now you will see some pickoff attempts here. He was fourth in the National League last year with 160 pickoff attempts. Derek second in the National League in average, tied for second in home runs, tied for first in RBIs. That's a strike. Hold for one last night, but had a sack fly. Walked twice and scored a run. Lyndon Rush beat Juan D. Rodriguez in a battle of left-handers last night. Perez is running. The throw by Osmus goes into center field. Nafee's going to stay at second. So he's a perfect four for four this year. And the Cubs with their 26th stolen days. Clemens tries to throw over a lot to nullify the running game because he's so slow to home plate. Navy picked a good pitch to run on also a breaking ball that was up and out of the strike zone. Perez goes hard into that bag with the back leg. He seems to be OK but very rough slide right there. Meanwhile one and one on Lee. Here's the next pitch. Now it's one and two. He's in an RBI spot right now, although he'll probably see Mr. Splitty here at some point down in the count against Clemens. And at least strikes out. Round number two. Such tough duty facing Clemens for a number of reasons. Uh, you want to make him get the high fastball down in the zone. You want to make him get the splitter up. Very tough to identify that pitch. He throws it so hard. That was an 88 mile an hour split fingered fastball. Most guys don't throw their heaters that fast. Burnett swings and misses. Jeremy with two career home runs against Clemens. Went three for three against him. In Houston on April 29th. Kick in the 0 1 pitch. So roller to Biggio. Short throw to Lamb to end the inning. Nafi Perez with a one out single, but the Cubs do not score in the first. Siblings are known to compete for attention. The Lincoln Navigator and Lincoln Aviator. The only domestic luxury SUVs featuring advanced track with roll stability control, climate controlled front seats, and precise handling fully independent suspension, plus a THX certified audio system. Get 2,500 cash back plus 1,000 Ford credit cash or 0% financing on select Lincoln SUVs during spring driving days. Hey, how's it going? It's go time. 
at Toyota's nationwide sales drive with phenomenal selection at every turn. Get a fun to drive 41 miles per gallon Corolla or the 30 miles per gallon sporty RAV4 and choose 3.9 financing for up to 60 months or 500 cash or a great lease on Corolla. There's also a 1.9 APR or 500 cash or great leases on RAV4. Toyota's nationwide sales drive is on now. Owning the winner's circle. Now that's moving you forward. Pretty bod meets pretty odd. I don't get many opportunities to touch beautiful women, let alone five dressed in their bikinis. Ew. From executive producer Ashton Kutcher, Beauty and the Geek, the competition begins this June on the WB. Larry Potash, weekdays on Chicago's very own WGN Morning News. No score as we start the second inning tonight. Middle game of this three-game series and for the Cubs. It is game five of this 10-game homestand. They're two and two to start the homestand. Lost the first two to the White Sox. And they beat the Sox Sunday and bested Houston last night. And again, the Astros are two and twenty on the road. Right now, enduring their third six game losing streak of the season. Well, worst road record in the majors. Last in batting average at 211. They've scored 57 runs in these 22 games. And a good majority of their home runs have been hit at Minute Maid Park. Kind of like Berkman busted his bat in a bloop single to open the second. So first hit for the Astros tonight against Mitre, who is facing this lineup for the first time in his career. And here's Mike Lamb playing first base. Of course, Jeff Bagwell is on the disabled list and will have shoulder surgery on June 2nd in Colorado arthroscopic capsular release is the name of the operation basically they're trying to loosen the shoulder and give Bagwell more range of motion and really Bob it's a last ditch attempt to, to save his career well you know talking to Phil Garner about it yesterday um, you know he, he wouldn't say specifically what caused the injury I'm sure it's an accumulation of things over the course of his career but he pointed out the fact that over the years uh, he has worked out in the weight room with Jeff Bagwell. They both uh, got into lifting some heavy weights and over the last three years he could really see Jeff Bagwell's strength dissipate as that injury got worse and worse. And of course word got around the National League that uh, Baggy couldn't throw the ball anymore. Team started to take advantage of that and eventually it got to the point where it was affecting his offense as well and it was just time to uh, to try something. I mean, this guy's been such a great player throughout his career, such a great representative of the Astros organization. It uh, it was tough to watch the last couple years what he had to go through just to get ready to go out and play a game. Two and one on Mike Lamb. And Berkman is running, and it was a hit and run, and Lamb tapped it foul. We talked about it in Houston. This is a team that got to within a game of the World Series last year. Won its first ever playoff series. And then took the Cardinals to game seven in the championship series. But this is a very different looking team this year. No Carlos Beltran. No Jeff Kent. Now Bagwell is out. Berkman missed the first one. Slowly hit on the ground past Mitre. And Enrique Wilson with a nifty flip over to Derek Lee. So a runner at second with one out. Looked like Wilson had to alter his path to the ball just a little bit to avoid the runner. So he just kind of ran around him a little bit. The underhand toss on to Derek Lee and plenty of time to get Lamb at first base. We see a lot of second basemen nowadays come in and, and scoop the ball with the glove all in one motion. They never get their throwing hand involved, but that time Enrique had plenty of time to Get the throwing hand on the ball, make the good solid underhand toss. Well, Morgan Ensberg off to a very solid start, hitting 300 with eight home runs. Second among National League third basemen in home runs and on base percentage, he's third in average in slugging. Now that's 
quite an accomplishment even this early in the season when you consider the third baseman in the National League. Now granted Mike Lowell off to a very slow start Scott Rowland injured. But when you think about slugging third baseman and guys who hit for average you don't think of Morgan Ensberg as being an elite guy but he is here in late May. And another thing that makes it all the more amazing is uh, you know much like Dusty Baker Phil Garner's had to shuffle his lineup on almost a daily basis depending on who's in there and how it best fits together today Adam Everett a light hitting shortstop behind Morgan Ensberg doesn't figure to give him much protection especially with the base open and Mitre throwing a lot of breaking balls here he knows he's got first base open he can fool around waste a couple pitches try to get Ensberg to chase something out of the zone. Sergio was called up earlier this month on May 10th spent two days in the bullpen did not pitch and then was sent back down on the 12th. So this is his second call up but his first appearance this year with the Cubs and he struck him out swinging. Let's hear from Dusty Baker about the young Sergio Mitre facing a future Hall of Famer tonight. Well it's a tough task but I mean hey man uh, you know as a kid this is what you this is what you dream about. And I just told him, hey man, you know, he's looking forward to it. And uh, I just, when he came in, I said, hey man, you know what you got to do, you know who you're facing. And, uh, you know, I'll be a tremendous feather in your cap, you know, after you beat Rod. Now facing Adam Everett with two outs and a strike. A lot of times pitchers are asked about facing, you know, another pitcher, and the answer is, well, really, I'm not facing the pitcher, I'm facing the other team's offense. Yeah. So that's how you have to look at it. Of course, in the case of Roger Clemens, he's a big part of their offense. Eight yeah. for 16 on the season, a 333 batting average. He's driven in a couple of runs. But I think uh, the rocket with a bat in his hand would be the least of Sergio Mitre's problems tonight. If he could work his way through the other eight guys, uh, he'll be happy with that. Here he comes on 0 2. Hot foul and no room for Ramirez. I don't know how you felt around the batting cage today but just it, it feels like fall it just kind of has that September feel a cool afternoon today and the wind blowing in again tonight 55 degrees at game time but yet very clear beautiful yeah. sunshiny day but definitely a chill in the air. Two on Everett. So everybody bundled up tonight. Got it. Mitre with a nice curveball to strike out Adam Everett. And that ends the Astros second. After the game, mandatory drug tests for pro athletes? How lawmakers are hoping to get doping out of big league sports. Tonight on WGN News After the Game. What can we do that would be fantastic? Make a date with Sex in the City, seven nights a week. Okay, let's give it a shot. Make the time this fall. Just go, have fun. Because Sex in the City will be here. Wow. Seven nights a week this fall. Be there or be square. God, you're old. Coming this fall on WGN. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Chevy, turn the key and start a revolution. There's only been two numbers retired. I've never had a more special day than when they retired it. That was my Hall of Fame. Get your hands on one hot number from Chevy. Now get up to $5,500 total cash back on select 2005 Chevy Tahoe vehicles and inventory. That's up to $5,500 total cash back on an 05 Tahoe. These fans have treated me so well. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Hey, Shy Town, it's time for the Pepsi Cube. Write down your name, address, phone number, and what inning the game is in. Send it to WGN TV for your chance to win.
Days are running out for Hyundai's Race for the Record sales event, and your Hyundai dealers are out to set a record with deals like up to $2,500 cash back or 0% APR on select models, including the Hyundai Santa Fe, winner of Strategic Vision's 2004 Total Value Award. Day after day, Hyundai's award-winning quality lets us offer America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. The race is on. Hurry to Hyundai's Race for the Record sales event for Memorial Day weekend at Hyundai. Get to your Chicagoland Hyundai dealer for Memorial Day weekend for up to $2,500 cash back or 0% APR. Well, no scores. The Cubs will bat here in the second inning. And uh, <laughs> does that come in an extra large? <laughs> Dalmatian number 102 right there. <laughs> yeah, you look good, Matt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ball, no strikes, and Aramis Ramirez. Oh, all the way from Belize. Out of way. Well, congratulations. Mark O'Neill and his wife Stephanie, Mark, the Cubs head trainer, they welcomed a son today. Kyle O'Neill joins Connor and Cade. So, congrats. As the O'Neills with an addition to their family. And also yesterday, Joe and Tata Borowski welcomed Ty Christian into the world. Five pounds, six ounces, 17 and a half inches. So their second son joining Blaze. So congratulations to the Borowskis. Popped up by Ramirez, back of first, and back into the seats. So it's that time of year, births and graduations. Ramirez with 21 career home runs against this Houston ball club. And of course, weddings as well. Our producer Pete Toma getting set for a Saturday wedding. Pete and Susie. Everybody's excited about it. Looking forward to that. A few last minute details to uh, to sort out for Saturday. But you know, Pete was here by 6 30, so we appreciate it. Three and two. Michael Barrett is on deck. Payoff pitch and he struck him out. Clemens with two strikeouts tonight, 4,382 in his career. Batting next, he mentioned number eight, Michael Barrett. And Clemens with the reputation of the power fastball, the splitter. This looked like a little cutter on the outside corner, a little baby slider just moves away from Aramis Ramirez. I mean, obviously, his two best pitches, the fastball, the splitter, but when you can go to a, an overhand curve on occasion, a slider on occasion, he's got all the weapons he needs out there. Well, Michael, last night, his first game back after the uh, right shoulder inflammation, he missed the weekend against the White Sox. And Michael went 0 for 3 last night, snapping a nine game hitting streak. The Cubs bench is short tonight. 1-1. One, one. Thrilled into center for Barrett. Tavares will come over and cut it off, and Michael with a one-out single. Well, the Cubs had to make a move today as they recalled Sergio Mitre to make this start tonight and here's what the bench looks like Ben Grieve has been optioned to Triple-A Iowa so you have Hollinsworth and Patterson from the left side the thing is Corey Patterson really wasn't able to swing the bat so you would wouldn't think he would be available to hit tonight so the Cubs bench is very short now we don't know what's going on with Todd Walker but you'd have to think that he'll be back over the next couple of days and of course the Cubs would have to make another 
roster move to accommodate him. So a lot of roster juggling going on with the Cubs right now. And this is where the versatility of Jerry Harrison Jr. and Jose Macias really come into play. Guys that are capable of playing numerous positions. But it really uh, limits the availability of pinch hitters, pinch runners, double switch candidates uh, when you have a bench as thin as Dusty has to work with tonight. Yeah, Corey said just kind of felt generally banged up and his wrist took the worst of the collision out in right center last night. He just kind of flexing that left hand. Here comes Clemens and Du Bois strikes out. And again, hopefully it's nothing serious with Corey, but when you see this collision, it could have been much worse. Now, fortunately, Jeremy, Jeremy Bernitz was kind of breaking down and peeling off of the ball as they made contact. Had Jeremy been running as hard as Corey Patterson after that ball, they may both still be laying out there in right center field, but quickly got to their feet, got off the field, and... Corey even said it last night. He knew he was going to have some sore spots today. We just didn't know where they were. And as it turns out, it's his left wrist that bothers him the most. So Enrique Wilson with his second at bat as a Cub, 0 for 1. Cubs signed him as a free agent on May 17. Began the year Triple A in the Orioles organization. 31 years old. He's a switch hitter. He's 0 for 3 in his career against Roger Clemens. Well, he's been with the Indians, Pirates, Yankees, and now the Cubs. Made 64 starts at second base and four at shortstop for the Yankees last year. Originally signed by the Minnesota Twins back in 1992. He's from the Dominican Republic. Side corner. Barrett, the runner at first, two outs in the inning. Fires and right center. It's Tavares with a running catch. He can move out there. Michael Barrett with a one out single, but they strand him. Hey, watch this. You want some of this? You like banana? Here, take it. Take it seriously. Go! Light, fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Bold design. Awesome power. The freshest full line of any manufacturer. This is Nissan Now. Get great offers like a $199 a month lease for just 24 months on Nissan Altima. This is the Nissan Now sales event. Hurry, offer ends May 31st. Wednesday, the two-hour season finale. A One Tree Hill so big, <laughs> it will take a full night to tell. And one of them... Your father can burn in hell for all I care. ...will get their revenge. Game over. The two-hour season finale. One Tree Hill. Wednesday night at 7 on WGN. It's amazing what people can do when they're confident in their equipment. You think about that. Then you build a range of turbocharged performance sedans with legendary Volvo safety. The 2005 Volvo S60s. Watch live Cubs games right on your computer. Sign up for MLB.tv now exclusively at Cubs.com. MLB.tv means live baseball. 
Well, Sergio Mitre has allowed one hit, but no runs through two innings. The Cubs have gotten great starts lately. When you go back to Saturday, Carlos Zambrano gave up a hit, no runs in seven innings. Mark Pryor went the distance Sunday, and Glendon Rush with his best start of the year last night. Five hits, one run in eight innings. You know, Dusty, when asked about the short-term future of Sergio Mitre he says, look, it's it's kind of in his hands. It all depends on him if he pitches well tonight. Probably see him again in five days. And the Cubs hadn't needed a fifth starter for about two weeks. But with this long stretch of games without an off day, they will need five starters. And I know you can speak from experience. There are many times when you need a starter from the minor leagues, and it's not necessarily the guy who has pitched the best at Triple A or in some cases Double A. Ramirez will backhand and throw out Brad Osmus. Maybe more often than not, it comes down to whose turn is it to pitch? Yeah, you can't use a guy who pitched Sunday. Right. You just uh, and with that in mind, if you anticipate when you will need that fifth starter. You may hold a guy back or limit his number of pitches uh, in his previous start, but a lot of times you just have to take the guy whose day it is to pitch. If he's a, a guy on your 40-man roster and you can make the move easily, that's uh, that's usually what you do. Roger Clemens again, six for 18 to start this season, and in his last outing, snapped a four-game hitting streak. Trying to figure out the meaning of that. To be honest with you, as Perez charges and throws out Clemens. I mean, would that guy like to see Clemens be an astronaut, literally? I'm not sure. I, I, I kind of doubt that was the meaning that okay. he had in mind yeah. when he took that sharpie to that piece of cardboard before he came to the ballpark today, but. Two down in the inning, and it's Willie Tavares who leads the National League with 14 stolen bases, and we mentioned the infield hits. First pitch strike. That's a real good idea right there with the veteran Roger Clemens grounding out for the second out of the inning. Tavares took his time to get to the plate. Probably going to take a couple of pitches here, and he does. So the best thing you can do as uh, an opposing pitcher is get ahead, throw that first strike right down the middle of the plate. You know Tavares is going to try to give Clemens a little time to regroup back in the dugout. And we talked about that recently during a telecast, the idea of understanding the situation when you are a pitcher. You have to know that after the other team's pitcher makes that second out, the next guy's probably going to take at least one, maybe two. Bad. Ramirez fields and throws him out. Sergio Mitre has been very sharp here in the early going. Hello. Hi. 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 Need a break from Chicago? Fly nonstop to all these cities on Southwest Airlines. The airline committed to serving Chicago. You are now free to move about the country. It's go time at Toyota's nationwide sales drive with phenomenal selection at every turn. Get a fun to drive 41 miles per gallon Corolla or the 30 miles per gallon sporty RAV4 and choose 3.9 financing for up to 60 months or 500 cash or a great lease on Corolla. There's also a 1.9 APR or 500 cash or great leases on RAV4. Toyota's nationwide sales drive is on now. Owning the winner's circle. Now that's moving you forward. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's moving forward. CarQuest, 3,600 CarQuest auto parts stores across North America. And by your local Acura dealers.
six speed, 270 horsepower Acura TL adjusts to the way each individual accelerates, brakes, and takes on the curves. Because no two drivers are alike. The Acura TL, a higher form of performance. Last of the third. Great to see John, Ken, Catherine, and Jack Enright at the ball game tonight. John fed our crew before the game with great ribs from the Blue Stone in Evanston. Great stuff. Sergio Mitre swings at the first pitch and a high fly to center for Tavares. WGN Sports coverage of Cubs baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Bud Light. All of our copy with the barbecue sauce all over it. <laughs> the pens are sticking to our hands. <laughs> Pages of the book sticking together. Jerry Harrison is 0 for 1. Strike one. We mentioned this number last night. The Astros have not been a good comeback team. When trailing after six, the Astros 0 and 22. Now runs may be scarce tonight against Roger Clemens, but it's an Astros offense that has really struggled. Ashton a deep left. That ball is deep. Way back and it's caught. Wynn knocked it down. Jerry looking for his first home run this year. You can tell he was disappointed. Looked like a split finger fastball that hung up in the strike zone a little bit. Didn't really get down where he wanted it. Hairston gets the bat head out in front, jerks it to left field, but there's nowhere to go into that stiff wind blowing straight in from left center field. Berkman catches it a couple of steps from the wall. Roger Clemens in, in his first five starts received five runs in support. He has gotten 11 over his last four. So the Astros have scored 16 runs for him in his first nine starts. Wanted by Perez. Clemens slides on his knees and throws him out. Comes with two hits, no runs through three. Nothing, nothing. Some cars are just born to follow. One dimensional, charisma free. But this car has a different vibe. It takes any road you throw at it and everything you throw in it. Runs fast between lights and long between fill-ups. Give it a destination and go where the vibe takes you. With available cash back and hot button bonus cash, a new vibe starts around 15.7. Non-GM owners and lessees get a new vibe for around 14.7. Hot button bonus cash on all Pontiac models ends May 31st. At Menards, we guarantee to save you big money. Sculpt your lawn and garden with edging by Mastermark. This four-foot section of pound-in edging is $1.99. This 40-foot contractor grade roll, only $11.44. Accent your landscape with decorative rock from Country Stone. Choose from five colors of decorative rock or red lava pebbles, only $2.22 a bag. Menards, guaranteed to save you big money. Save big money at Menards. Nice. Shall we? This new M-Class has a more powerful engine, 268 horsepower. <laughs> Corner. Seven speeds. Hands never leave the wheel. Yeah. All new interior. Sportier. Better handling. Can we stop? Sir, please. Oh, sure. Electronic brake assist. So what'd you think? Wow. <laughs> the totally redesigned, all new 2006 M-Class, starting at 40,470. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Really cool, but a beautiful evening here on the north side for Cubs baseball. 
And coming up tomorrow, the first 20,000 fans will receive a scratch and win card. 250 random lucky winners will win an MLB authenticated autograph Ryan Sandberg photo, compliments of Nissan. Now, fans are encouraged to hold on to their cards for second chance drawings throughout the game. Four complete rules. Visit Cubs.com. Todd Self, the right fielder, making his fourth consecutive start. His first big league hit was on the 18th of this month, a two run homer off Russ Ortiz of the Diamondbacks. And we haven't seen him a whole lot, but after watching him last night, looks like he can hit. He good numbers in the minor leagues everywhere he played. We saw him last night drive a ball down the left field line. We've seen him turn on pitches inside. Looks like he has a great approach at the plate. A very narrow stance for a tall player. Has his feet very close together, but he doesn't take a very big stride. Stays on top of the ball really well. well he may have faced Mitre already this year, Triple A. He draws a walk to lead off the fourth. Second time the Astros have had the leadoff man on base. And the first sign at all for Sergio Mitre of losing a little bit of command there to self. He was hitting corners, and when he missed, he was always missing in his favor, but four wide ones there gets the Astros the leadoff man on base. It brings up Craig Biggio into the infield hits for Willie Tavares with 17. Greg Biggio in his big league career with 438 infield hits, leading all active players. He's in his 18th major league season. He still looks like the bat boy. To illustrate the uh, the home and road splits, I mean Craig Biggio kind of sums it up. The Astros again as a team hitting just 211 on the road. I mean, no RBIs. Eight home runs at Minute Maid Park in Houston. I'd venture to guess that the overwhelming majority, if not all eight of those, hit into the Crawford boxes right down the left field line. is driven down the left field line that ball is hooking and it's out of play I was talking yesterday before the game with Tim Perpura who is the new general manager of the Houston Astros took over for Jerry Hunsaker they have a rule at the minor league level they have prohibited head first slides into first base and into home plate Roger Cedeno, I guess a few years ago, uh, broke his hand sliding head first into first. I think that's an interesting uh, rule to have. They're just trying to get guys not to dive head first into first or at home. And really at home plate, there's no reason to ever dive toward the plate. Another one hit well, and this one is hooking out of play. And he said, you know, there are exceptions. If you're trying to kind of slide around a tag and you kind of go head first a little bit that's one thing but boy a lot of bad things can happen when you go in with those digits first some very fragile body parts exposed when you slide head first into home plate the catcher's got all that gear on trying to block the dish left field Dubois going back on this one and he won't get it self had to hold up just past second he'll end up at third and it's a double for Craig Biggio his 579th career double. So Du Bois got back in that little corner area and was unable to make the catch. I think this is an error of inexperience more than anything else. Very limited playing time out there for Jason. He's not quite sure of where he is in relation to that wall. As you mentioned, there's that area out there in straightaway left field where it dips back probably about 10 or 12 feet deeper than it is further over toward the gap and he was right there in that area wasn't quite sure where he was in relation to the wall and couldn't come up with the leaping catch 
Ramirez just about even with third base. Everybody else back on the infield with Berkman at the plate. Going to hold from third. It looked like they had Biggio caught, but Derek Lee is just going to tag Berkman out. Craig Biggio was assuming that Todd Self was going to try to score, and Lee almost had a play on Biggio, but he took the sheer out. Yeah, with runners at second and third base, the, the third base coach, in this case Doug Manzalino, will give a sign to the runner at second as to what the runner at third base is going to do on a ground ball. Is he going to go on contact? Are we going to make the ball go through? Uh, sometimes you'll point at the two middle infielders and he's going to go in contact if it's hit at the middle infielders he's going to make it go through if it's hit at the corner infielders that time obviously uh, Biggio got a little bit of a different read than self the runner at third base who was holding all the way and sometimes that runner at second base gets a little better view he could see that it was going to be a chopper off the bat right away and Craig Biggio being an aggressive runner probably said well I would have gone on that if I was at third base but uh, you got to pay attention to that third base coach. He lets the runner at second know what the runner at third is going to do. Here comes a 1 0 to Lamb, and another chopper. Self going to try to score this time. The throw by Lee, and safe at the plate is Todd Self. So he was able to touch the plate with his hand, and a good slide, and it's 1 to nothing. Well that time the contact play obviously on self broke as soon as the ball was hit off of home plate a high chopper down to Derek Lee tries to throw on the move as best he can. Looked like Michael Barrett came out in front of home plate just a little bit. You see self breaking on contact and there's that slide you were talking about leading with the hand but yet kind of sliding feet first around the tag at home plate but it looked like Barrett got a little bit too far up in front of the plate to give self enough room to get around behind. So it's one to nothing Houston and it brings up Morgan Ensberg right back to the pitcher. He'll get it out at second. The relay is not in time and that'll cost the Cubs another run as Biggio scores. Ensberg just able to beat out the double play. I think this is a good decision by Mitre, but a poor relay throw to second base. Napi has to go back to the shortstop side and reach for the ball. That takes all of his momentum away. All he can do is make an arm throw onto first base, and in the judgment of John Hirschbeck, the crew chief, Ensberg was able to beat it at first. So Ensberg will get an RBI on the fielder's choice. The previous batter, Mike Lamb, a fielder's choice, no RBI, and it's two to nothing. So Mitre after allowing the first two men to reach has gotten three ground balls since but the Astros have scored two runs well, the ball tapped back to Mitre and his throw to second base is on the shortstop side of the bag if it's directly over the bag or to the second base side Nafi Perez would be allowed to take his momentum into his throw to first base and they probably would have been able to complete the double play but because the throw was on the wrong side of the bag unable to get enough on the throw to get the runner at first his 0 1 pitch and that missed to Everett one and one. So while the Astros have struggled offensively, Roger Clemens hasn't needed a lot of runs as the runner was moving and Barrett unable to locate the ball. And it will be a stolen base for Morgan Ensberg. Michael Barrett tries to pick that ball out of the dirt and throw all in one motion. Unfortunately just couldn't come up with it didn't even know where the ball was momentarily but the other option is to drop down your knees and block it at which point you're conceding that base so he tried to do everything he could. Called strike three Everett is out the Astros get two so they're on the board first tonight. After the game. 
What did Jay say? Details on Jay Leno's testimony in the Michael Jackson trial. And if it helped the defense. Tonight on WGN News after the game. Pretty Bob meets Pretty Odd. Hello, ladies. Woo! From executive producer Ashton Kutcher. Beauty and the series premiere June 1st at 7. It's happening now, the Chrysler Memorial Day sales event, where we'll give you up to $3,500 in combined cash allowances, or get 0% financing when you buy select Chrysler vehicles. Plus, make no monthly payments until November. Check out Town & Country with Stow & Go, the safety utility vehicle Pacifica, the Chrysler 300 2005 Motor Trend Car of the Year, and the best small car alternative PT Cruiser. Hurry in, because these great Memorial Day sales event deals end May 31st. Come on, hop in. I tell you, Carson, the excitement here is tremendous. Look at that. I didn't know P. Diddy drove a Diet Pepsi truck. Don't scratch it. All right, this is how I roll. Hey, yo, P. Check out my new ride. Polite society tells us that it's rude to stare. But then along came the 2005 V6 Nissan Altima with a redesigned interior, a state-of-the-art navigation system and satellite radio, and a sleek, refined exterior. So go ahead, stare. Frankly, it'd be rude not to. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN-TV Chicago. Uh, sun getting ready to set. And the Cubs are batting here in the fourth inning. One strike on Derek Lee. Roger Clemens staked to a 2-0 lead. He won't know what to do with a 2-0 lead. He hasn't seen many of these lately. Well, he has the best earned run average in the majors. Came in at 1.29. 331 career wins, 166 losses. And this is career appearance number 650 and start number 649. Six time 20 game winner. And a record seven Cy Youngs for Roger Clemens. And you have to wonder if he will be an Astro at the end of the season. When you look at the Astros record it does make you think will he be a New York Yankee at some point once again I mean the Astros have not sold this season as a rebuilding year they do have some young players but with the starting rotation they have when you look at some of the guys on this team Andy Pettit Roger Clemens. They have John Franco, left-hander. Of course, Craig Vigio. Thought they were going to have Jeff Bagwell, but he may not play again this year. I mean, sometimes you can overestimate your own guys as well. Brandon Backey, a guy that really came into his own in the postseason last year, he struggled through the early going this season. Brad Lidge has pitched well even though he's given up over a hit an inning this year as their closer. And sometimes you project what you think guys are going to do based upon what you've seen the year before and they don't always continue to progress the way you had hoped they would. And as you mentioned earlier losing Jeff Kent Carlos Beltran a big chunk of their offense went out the door. Swing and a miss and a strikeout so Lee has been punched out twice. By Clemens. The Rocket really throwing the kitchen sink at Derek Lee tonight. The splitter once again from our Southwest Plain View cam. He threw him a slider earlier in the sequence. He's throwing him high fastballs. He's throwing him two seam fastballs. Jeremy Burnitz to deep left. That's slicing, and it's Berkman to make the grab. So two down here in the fourth. And of course, if the Astros were to consider trading Roger Clemens, they'd have to consult with him. 
So it comes down to are they interested at some point in moving him? And is he interested in going elsewhere? I mean, he had retired, and really the only reason he came back is because it was with his hometown team, because Andy Pettit had just become an Astro. Wine in the one strike pitch. That's downstairs, and it's one and one. I mean, let me ask you this. If you had a, a game seven of the playoff series tomorrow, which starting pitcher in the major leagues would you would you want on the mound for you? All things being equal, everybody being healthy? Yeah. Kurt Schilling. Say what you will. The guy uh, came up in a big way for me in Game Seven of the 2001 World Series, and uh, it's a great choice. He's done it many times before. I mean, there are some players out there that uh, have great seasons and will rise to the occasion, and there are other players that uh, are at their best when the lights are shining the brightest. And he's the guy that certainly likes the lights shining brightly upon him. Michael Barrett on deck. I mean, I think back to my playing career, Will Clark. Uh, think back to the 89 playoffs the Giants against the Cubs he was another one of those players that just seemed to be able to rise to the occasion and Clemens with another strikeout that is number five through four innings Astros shutting out the Cubs early two to nothing. Hey Cubs fans keep your eye on the ball Every time a Cubs player hits a homer at Wrigley, you could be a winner. It's the Southwest Airlines How Far Did It Fly Home Run Contest. After every Cubs homer, write down the distance along with your name and address and send it to WGN-TV. Ten winners will receive two round-trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. For every Cubs homer, ask yourself, how far did it fly? From Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the Chicago Cubs. Siblings are known to compete for attention. The Lincoln Navigator and Lincoln Aviator. The only domestic luxury SUVs featuring advanced track with roll stability control, climate controlled front seats, and precise handling fully independent suspension. Plus a THX certified audio system. Get 2,500 cash back plus 1,000 Ford credit cash or 0% financing on select Lincoln SUVs during spring driving days. The rent check was the last straw. How could you not get it there? I depended on you. <sighs> Look, I found someone who doesn't let me down. Someone dedicated, responsible, not like you. And no, we can't be friends. At Bank One, you can always rely on us. Introducing Overnight Check. Order online by 9 p.m. and we'll overnight a check by the next business day, guaranteed. Overnight Check, only from Bank One. Sportoon suspension, traction control, ABS, it even comes in a sport wagon and a five-door. Man, this car sells itself. No offense. People are getting the message. Mazda's on the move with Mazda 6. Now lease a Mazda 6i sports sedan for $199 a month for 36 months with $19.99 due at lease signing. Check out the entire Mazda 6 series at your Chicagoland Northwest Indiana Mazda dealer now. Two hits for each team. Astros with two runs in the fourth inning. Sergio Mitre facing Brad Ausmus, who hit a home run last night, his first home run of the season. It was the only run the Astros scored last night against Glendon Rush and Ryan Dempster. How about Dempster? A four pitch, one, two, three, ninth inning for his third save. Two and one. Mitre, a seventh round pick back in 2001, same draft as Mark Pryor. And they're both from Southern California. Mitre from Los Angeles to San Diego City College. Come on, the high school in Chula Vista. Two two fouled away. Well, happy 
birthday to Cubs fan Karen Stewart. Watching the ball game tonight. Also the WGN crew wishes a happy birthday to Mrs. Pat O'Neill watching from home tonight. Hit hard on the ground but right at Nafee. Looks it in. The crow hop and the throw to Lee. Here's a look at our Sharp Aquos high definition booth monitor. It is available at Apt Electronics. Speaking with Ryan Dempster. His appearance lasted about 28 seconds last night. That's how you like it. <laughs> Absolutely. Bring that closer in there, throwing strikes, ball being put in play, defense making the plays behind him. A very orderly ninth inning after the first eight innings, very orderly by Glendon Rush. a few people talking about Roger Clemens and his penchant for pitching inside and that it might you know change a little bit when he became a national leaguer because now he has to stand in the box you just get the impression that it really doesn't matter if he had pitched in the National League his whole career he's still going to pitch inside I don't think there's any question he'll pitch inside but I wonder if he would have hit as many guys in the helmet as he did in the American <laughs> well, League you know pitching yeah. inside is one thing head hunting is another and there are those who accused Roger throughout his American League career of intentionally head hunting and uh, I'm sure there are a lot of retired American League hitters that would like to see nothing better than Sergio Mitre bury one in the Rockets rib cage right here but uh, Cub fans would prefer just to get him out. One two is on the way and the curveball a knee buckler from Mitre. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. On the WB Wednesday, Lucas is tempted by Brooke and the Big Apple. Rock band Jimmy Eat World performs on the two-hour season finale of One Tree Hill, Wednesday at 7 on WGN, Chicago's WB. Now, once again, Willie Tavares taking his time after Roger Clemens made the second out. He did that in the third inning and again here in the fifth. But back in the third inning he grounded out ran down the first baseline this time he just walked back to the dugout so Tavares might be hacking at the first pitch if he likes it. Come on, really? Right you are. You know it always amazed me I mean pitchers in the major leagues you really work on three things you work on your pitching you work on your bunting and you run those are the three things you do in your life. But if a pitcher's asked to run 90 feet down the first baseline, the entire game has to come to a halt so he can get back in the dugout and refresh himself. Geez, they run on that warning track all afternoon. Flared into right and a base hit for Tavares. Well said by a former catcher. <laughs> Well, they never felt sorry for the catcher. I mean, 90 feet is a long way to run when you've been squatting for three hours, but they never worried about how you felt. Just put your gear on and get back there. Yeah, well, the pitcher might occasionally ask for a new baseball when you took a foul tip, but that was about it, right? Yeah, occasionally. Now, what year was that? Now, that's the old giant. That's got to be about uh, maybe 82 or 83, yeah. maybe. Uh -huh. 1983. Look at that equipment. 22 years ago as a Cubs pitch out Tavares was not running. Now there are those who said I was several years into my catching career before they told me about the mask. But uh, that's not the case. Quick <laughs> throw to first. Although when I first got to the big leagues catchers were not required to wear the hard helmet. And uh, I think I might have been one of the last catchers in the big leagues just to wear a hat underneath my mask and uh, got a few long back swings that caught me on the back of the head which explains a lot of the things that have happened later in life. Tavares running swing and a miss the throw just late. Michael didn't have a chance and Tavares who gets his 15th stolen base. And you knew with two outs in the inning he was going to attempt to steal that bag at some point the Cubs pitched out on the first pitch to self but. Just too big of a jump right here. The only chance they had was perhaps if Michael Barrett could have made contact with the batter. You saw Self kind of lean out over the plate a little bit, but Michael's throw to second base kind of cleared him of the batter, so no chance for interference there.
boy tremendous stop on a breaking ball that was over into the batter's box and already at this point of the game a lot of holes dug in over there that ball hit in front of self's front foot and Michael Barrett is still able to shift over there get his body in front of the ball and keep that one from getting by looked like it might have caught part of his bare hand but able to hold that runner at second base it was good to see that strong throw of course Michael with the mild inflammation in his throwing shoulder and so might have been aggravated a little bit because he threw extra last week after a throwing error. Yeah, of course spring training is the time where position players especially catchers really concentrate on their fundamentals and get a lot of throwing a lot of blocking balls in the dirt but from time to time during the course of the season Michael Barrett and Henry Blanco will go down to the bullpen with Juan Lopez and they'll work on blocking balls in the dirt and other days they'll work on their throws to the bases and sometimes after a, an extra session of throwing uh, you come up a little bit cranky in that throwing arm you know you don't often hear about the condition of a, of a catcher's shoulder or elbow. Now, of course, the throw back to the pitcher is no big deal, but you are making a ton of throws, and other than the pitchers, the catchers throw as much as anyone. Well, they talk so much about pitch count for a pitcher. You know, if the pitcher throws 125 pitches, uh, the catcher's probably going to throw about 100 of those back to him. Full count on self. A little sinker off the outside corner just drops low out of the strike zone at the last instant. Michael Bear tried to hold it up there and give Wally Bell a good look at it. Brings up a 3 2 pitch to right. Burnitz with the catch. And the inning is over. It's still 2 to nothing, Houston. I'm Chris Alexander. I'm Joe Lay. I'm Lisa Adelsberger. And I'm proud to work at Anheuser-Busch. The only major American brewery that's still American-owned. Because when profits stay in the U.S., so does your money. Because all of us believe the greatest country in the world deserves the best beer in the world. Why do the employees of Anheuser-Busch work so hard to make the world's finest beer? Because I'm an owner. I'm an owner. I'm an owner. This is America's beer. This is Anheuser-Busch. Days are running out for Hyundai's Race for the Record sales event, and your Hyundai dealers are out to set a record with deals like up to 2,500 cash back or 0% APR on select models, including the Hyundai Santa Fe, winner of Strategic Visions 2004 Total Value Award. Day after day, Hyundai's award-winning quality lets us offer America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. The race is on. Hurry to Hyundai's Race for the Record sales event for Memorial Day weekend at Hyundai. Get to your Chicagoland Hyundai dealer for Memorial Day weekend for up to 2,500 cash back or 0% APR. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Hyundai, driven by a commitment to quality that lets them offer America's best warranty. Walgreens, the pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs, your local Chicagoland Mercedes-Benz dealers, and by your local Honda dealers. Fact one, they come equipped with uniquely advanced VTech engine technology. Fact two, all three have been rated an excellent value by IntelliJoyce. Fact three, Honda was rated best brand resale value. And if that's not enough, they all come with Honda's reputation for durability. The Element, the Pilot, and the CRV. Now you can lease a Honda Pilot EX for $279 a month for well-qualified buyers. Hey Cubs fans, don't forget to hit our WGN Sports baseball blog brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. On the blog today, we address the Danny Graves rumors, give you game notes from our friends at Stats Inc., and you can find pictures from last weekend's Crosstown Classic here at Wrigley. And a strike on Michael Barrett comes with two hits. Got the runner pass second. Hard up the middle, and it's Adam Everett to retire Michael Barrett. Well, some emails wondering if Tom Otis Hellman, the Cubs clubhouse manager, is a bad boy again. There he is, game three. He jumped into the dugout with the uniform on Sunday to just try to change the mojo, and the Cubs won. Did it again last night, Cubs won again, so here he is tonight. 
Send us an email, WGN Cubs TV booth at AOL.com. And we, uh, we would be glad to take suggestions throughout the year on our uh, newly laid out word of the day to try to expand our vocabulary and maybe we'll learn, a, learn something new each and every Cubs telecast. We'll have to come up with something about Otis here, maybe find a fun word tonight. Enrique Wilson on deck. I would just say this. Uh, last night we had a, an ear candle discussion and a rather a <laughs> petulant response from some uh, regarding that discussion. But mix a camp on whether it's something people want to do. Swing and a miss. I did ask Jerry Harrison what was going on with the ear because at one point this is what spurned the discussion he uh, he took his helmet off he had something in his ear he thought it was a bug or something and actually it was dirt had fallen out of his helmet into his ear. And that began the ear candle discussion uh -huh. that rages on to this day in parts of Chicago. Just had spawned that discussion and spurned. And <laughs> two boys strikes out. We're talking about vocabulary here. So, Drop that on. Word you. of the day. It's ridiculous. <laughs> a bunch of emails on that. <laughs> two down here in the fifth. to watch a ball game tonight. Inside on Enrique Wilson. Ah, oh, you gotta love live television, don't you? <laughs> you ever have somebody say, hey, you know, you said this last night, you realized, and you say, really? And you literally didn't even remember what you said. Your mouth just starts moving, and you know, over the course of three hours, sometimes words tumble out that you don't even remember. That's a strike. Like spurned. Spurned. <laughs> After I said it, I'm thinking, <laughs> what, what did I just say? We knew what you meant. Yeah, right. Roger Clemens with six strikeouts and no walks. And he's been on top of his game tonight. Really, he's been on top of his game all year, but that's the first walk. He will bring up the pitcher with two outs. Big at bat right there by Enrique Wilson. May not seem like much in the grand scheme of things, but it does get Sergio Mitre to the plate this inning, gets him out of the way, and now there's some concern. On the part of the Astros coming out to check on Roger Clemens. Well, Andy Pettit was skipped last night with left forearm tightness. And of course, you always have to pay close attention to the guy who's 42 years old. Phil Garner and the Astros trainer back in the dugout and Clemens now facing Mitre. Sergio in his big league debut he mentioned it against Greg Maddox. Like in July of 03 got his first major league hit in that game and he's now two for 18 in his career. Bouncer, it's Ensberg. He'll get the out at second. And that's it for the fifth. It's jammed or something. What are you doing? Step back. What are you doing in my car? Want to get away? 
Now you can. Fly Southwest Airlines from Chicago Midway to select cities in the Midwest for just $49. Give your gas card a break and fly Southwest. You are now free to move about the country. One car has factory installed keyless remote start and it's not a Honda Accord. Only one car has the first and largest four panel panoramic roof available and it's not a Toyota Camry. And it's not a Nissan Altima 2.5 that has the most powerful engine. It's the first ever Pontiac G6. With hot button bonus cash and available cash back, the first ever G6 starts around 19.8. Hot button bonus cash on all Pontiac models ends May 31st. From coast to coast, cops are cracking down on safety belt violations. It doesn't matter who you are or where you live, they'll be on the lookout. Cops write tickets to save lives. If you don't buckle up, expect a ticket. Click it or tick it. After the game, mandatory drug tests for pro athletes? How lawmakers are hoping to get doping out of big league sports. Plus, angry dog owners unleashed. Why strict enforcement of leash laws now have an alderman growling. And details on Jay Leno's testimony in the Michael Jackson trial. Tonight on WGN News After the Game. Time to have a ball with the Illinois Lottery. Yeah, Gabby Hartnett. <laughs> The uh, Hall of Fame catcher and manager with the uh, Cubs. And getting some jerseys tonight. Everybody signing up for a chance to win a Gabby Harden in 1938 home jersey. Well, that is a great item. I'm seeing the old Cubs jerseys. That was back in the day when a lot of teams assigned uniform numbers depending on what position you play not sure if that was the case with Gabby Hardnett but uh, two is the number designated for the catcher's position on the field Gabby Hartnett was uh, born in Socket Rhode Island I think Rocco Baldelli is from a uh, wound socket just north of high socket strike on Vigio. Yep, Rocco Baldelli. For the moon socket. 1-1 one, one is grounded foul. Well, this season series knotted up at two games apiece. Astros took two of three in Houston earlier this year. Cubs winning last night in game one of this set. Tomorrow night couple of right handers Brandon Backey against Greg Maddox this is a first series of three or four games for the Cubs as that one is tapped and it kicks foul first time in Wrigley history the Cubs are playing a home series of three or more games in which every game of the series will be played at night twice previously the Cubs had played four game sets in which the first three were night games and the series finale was played during the daytime it has to feel strange for a visiting team to come to Chicago for a three game series at Wrigley Field and not have to crawl out of bed at seven o'clock in the morning at least one of those days Astros were out early taking extra batting practice. A lot of times what a team will do is they'll just open it up and a lot of times the, the bench guys the reserves who don't get a lot of playing time they'll come out for early BP and there are regular position players who are working on things and they'll come out at uh, 1 32 o'clock rifled into left so Biggio with his second hit tonight. Dan Wheeler is up in the Astros pen so it makes you wonder if Roger Clemens is is done tonight. He went right down the stairs and toward the clubhouse after the fifth inning. There you go. 
Slowly hit on the ground. The Cubs will try to turn two, and they do. Six, four, three. So Perez and Wilson teaming up. Wasn't sure if that ball was hit hard enough to turn to it kind of died in the infield grass Napier with the underhand toss to Enrique Wilson with a real nice turn just in time to get Berkman at first base Greg Biggio going in hard at second base you know he has been slid into like that many times in his career but didn't bother Wilson at second as he turned that double play One strike on Mike Lamb who has one home run this year was that big grand slam his first career grand slam against Mark Pryor in Houston on May 1st. Mitre's had a good breaking ball tonight at times he's been a little inconsistent with his command but most of the time when he's missed he's missed in his favor further away from the hitter or further down in the strike zone. Check swing did he go no. Says Jim Reynolds. Another good sharp breaking ball down low. Ooh. Got to have strong wrist to be able to hold that bat after it gets that far through the hitting zone. Well, I mentioned Todd Walker, and he's really heated up on his rehab assignment. He went three for five last night for Iowa. He has appeared in eight games at AAA. How about the West 10 Diamond Jacks? First place at 32 and 12. Felix PA with 10 home runs. And Carmen Pignatello had a no hit bid through eight and two thirds, gave up a ninth inning single with a one hit complete game. Sorry, it was not a complete game, but no decision. As that ball game with 10 innings. But Pignatello with a 3.10 earned run average at double A. That team is playing great baseball right now. And PA with the walk-off solo homer in the bottom of the 10th. It's his second home run in the last couple of days. He's having quite a year with the long ball. And yeah, Ronnie Cedeno had three hits yesterday for the Iowa Cubs. But PA showing a lot more power. There in 2005. It's Ramirez to lead. Inning over, two to nothing, Houston. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Pepsi, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball and the Chicago Cubs. Supercharged. Hey, I'm, I'm late for this award show. Can I get a ride? Come on, hop in. I'll tell you, Carson, the excitement here is tremendous. Look at that. I didn't know P. Diddy drove a Diet Pepsi truck. Don't scratch it. All right, this is how I roll. Hey, yo, P. Check out my new ride. It's happening now, the Dodge Memorial Day sales event, where we'll give you up to a $4,000 cash allowance plus a $1,000 made bonus cash, or get 2% financing when you buy a Dodge. Plus, make no monthly payments until November. And get great deals on any Dodge, including the Grand Caravan with stow-and-go seating and storage, Ram with available Hemi power, the all-new Dakota, the versatile Magnum, and the big size and smooth ride of Durango. Hurry to the Memorial Day sales event. Offers end May 31st. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. 
Welcome back to Wrigley Field. The bad news for the Cubs are down two to nothing. The good news is Roger Clemens is out. Of course, the Astros hope it's nothing serious, but I guess tightness in his right groin. So the Astros going into their bullpen here in the sixth inning. Well, uh, the way Roger was pitching tonight, I mean, you, you never wish anybody to to get injured, especially nothing serious. But uh, you get into that Astros bullpen, you got a chance right now. Clemens was on top of his game tonight, cruising along and not giving up a run. Only a couple of base hits, six strikeouts, one walk. And the one walk coming in was next to the last batter that he faced when Phil Garner, the Astros trainer, went out to check on him. And as we said, after the inning, he went straight up the tunnel to the clubhouse. So Cubs have a chance here to break through against the Astros bullpen. It's right-hander Dan Wheeler facing the top of the order here in the sixth inning. You never want to see a guy on the other team leave due to injury. But the Cubs will try to take advantage here with Clemens out of the game. He allowed two hits and no runs. Just three base runners total in his five innings tonight. So he did complete five, has a chance for his fourth win. But a long way to go. Two and one on Hairston playing in center field again Corey Patterson taken out of the starting lineup with a sore left wrist. Hairston would have been in the lineup anyway but he was originally scheduled to play second. So Jerry with his fourth start in center this year. We hope this would be a big psychological lift for the Cubs offense. I mean, sometimes it's a future Hall of Famer like Roger Clemens. Other times it might be a number four or five starter who is right on top of his game on a given night, really stifling your offense. And once he goes out of the ball game, it doesn't matter who comes in from that bullpen. Uh, your offense feels a lift. They feel a, a psychological lift like they have a chance now to make something happen. up Jerry Hairston. Like a comeback sinker started just off the corner. They're saying it was stayed off the corner. We'll get another look at it right there. Kind of a crossfire angle. We'll get a look from our Southwest Plain View camera. You can see Wally Bell, the umpire, set up on the inside corner. That pitch was a little bit of a crossfire to the outside corner with movement back toward the middle of the plate. A lot of tough visuals right there for a home plate umpire. Toward the line, and it's caught by Lance Berkman. Well, coming up Sunday, the first 20,000 fans will receive a scratch and win card with a chance to win an MLB authenticated autograph Billy Williams photo. 500 random winners will take a photo home compliments of MBNA. Fans are encouraged to hold on to their cards for second chance drawings throughout the game. For complete rules, visit Cubs.com. And nothing on Derek Lee. Dan Wheeler. Was suspended last year as a result of being injected on August 29th at Wrigley at Derek Lee. Those things were very uh, tense between these two clubs toward the end of last year. A strike to make it one and two. sinker that caught part of the play. Nice. Hey, there's some Bud Light. <laughs> hey, how about a Bud Light? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Bud Light, fresh, smooth, real. Another Bud Light? Sure. It's all here. Shining is giving someone a voice. With Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, you'll have the tools and flexibility to make the smartest decisions for you and your family. Because we believe your health care should stay right where it belongs, in your hands. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, shining through. It's go time at Toyota's nationwide sales drive with phenomenal selection at every turn. Like the available all-wheel drive Sienna minivan. Right now, choose between 1.9% financing or $500 cash or a great lease. There's also lots of choices on Highlander, like 2.9 financing for up to 48 months or 800 cash or a great lease. Toyota's nationwide sales drive is on now. Owning the winner's circle. Now that's moving you forward. Wednesday. No bank account? No credit history? No problem. How paying your bills on time could go a long way towards creating credit. Wednesday on WGN News at 9. Time now for our Budweiser Game Time Fan Cam on a great night in Chicago. Astros leading this one two to nothing. And Innsberg grounds out for out number one here in the seventh. Gotta to listen to some more Ray Charles. And nighttime is the right time. Morgan Ensberg, rather Adam Everett after Ensberg grounded out. For out number one, Mitre into the seventh inning tonight. Everett has struck out looking twice. And the pitch. In there. Well, Mitre has done what you ask out of a starter. Keeping his team in the ballgame. One and two. I wouldn't say Mitre has exceeded expectations tonight, but certainly he has pitched well enough to keep his team in the ballgame, give them an opportunity to win had it not been for the outstanding five innings that Roger Clemens put on the board. Two and two. Jeff Gordon coming up. On our seventh inning stretch. He's going to give me a ride home after the game. <laughs> <laughs> what is the speed limit on Lakeshore Drive anyway? <laughs> <laughs> two, two. Stays high. Chad Qualls is up for the Astros in their bullpen. That's a fair ball inside a third. Stops in that high grass out in left. And it's a standing double for Adam Everett. Oh, pulled hard past Aramis Ramirez at third base. We've seen a lot of balls get into the outfield grass and die quickly. Wrigley has always been notorious for their slow grass in the infield, but look at that ball just stops dead out there. Like an Easter egg hunt. Runner at second with one out, and it's Brad Osmus who's grounded out twice. Inside corner and a strike.
Yeah, this is where the strategy of the game really changes. With Clemens in the game, a normal, healthy Roger Clemens cruising along with the shutout going, he would be the on-deck hitter at this point, and you might choose to go ahead and walk Brad Osmus, knowing that Clemens would hit for himself in the seventh inning of a shutout. But now with the rocket out of the game, the Astros already into their bullpen. If you put Brad Osmus on base, you are going to see a pinch hitter for Dan Wheeler. We're probably going to see a pinch hitter for Dan Wheeler either way. Kicks away from Barrett, but not very far, and Everett has to hold it second. Well, that's a big block right there. You keep that runner at second base with one out. If he's able to advance to third base on this ball, a sack fly to the outfield, the Cubs would be forced to bring their infield in. Really changes the complexion of this inning. Michael Barrett's ability to keep that ball in front and keep that runner at second base. He trays 2-1. Bouncer foul. Michael Wirtz is a right-hander. Will Ullman, the lefty. And he's gotten a lot of rest recently, prior with the complete game on Sunday, and then Leonard Rush went eight last night. Check swing, and might be held up. Boy, a ball got out of the Cubs' bullpen, and it was rolling along the line it actually kicked into the Cubs dugout it would have had to call time the ball actually hit that railing there on the right of your screen I think it hit Chris Spire on the carom <laughs> bizarre three two pitch Number to Wilson two away in the inning and Everett at third and Dan Wheeler right back into the dugout It's going to be former Cub Jose Vizcaino to pinch hit. Vizcaino three for ten on the season as a pinch hitter with four RBIs. Two for eight from the left side of the plate as a pinch hitter. Andre Rothschild walking out. Well, we have a moment. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN. From executive producer Ashton Kutcher, reality TV's latest social experiment matches the hotties with the naughties. Beauty and the Geek premieres Wednesday, June 1st at 7 on WGN, Chicago's WB. It's two to nothing Houston. They have a runner at third with two outs here in the seventh. Bravo, Jose! Would you like to hang that flag tonight? But they'll need to come from behind here late. This guy, you know, a switch hitter. And he pops it foul out of play. Again, Jeff Gordon, NASCAR superstar coming up. As a guest conductor, and take me out to the ball game. One strike pitch, and now nothing in two on Vizcaino. Astros are looking for just their third win on the road all year. Struck him out. Mitre gets out of the seventh. It's still two to nothing. Series champion Jeff Gordon. Right, Chicago, it's great to be here at Wrigley Stadium. You guys ready to do this? A one, a two, a three.
At Lexus, we're obsessed with making cars that handle and perform like no others. In this pursuit of perfection, we've also developed a camera which aids in negotiating the occasional obstacle to the rear. See your Chicago area Lexus dealer. Discover Aquafresh Extreme Clean. Its microactive foam seeks out sources of bad breath, even in the pores of your tongue, leaving you so refreshingly clean, you can't help feeling a change. Aquafresh Extreme Clean. Take the feeling of clean to the extreme. Wednesday, the two-hour season finale. A One Tree Hill so big, <laughs> it will take a full night to tell. And one of them... Your father can burn in hell for all I care. ...will get their revenge. Game over. The two-hour season finale. One Tree Hill. Wednesday night at 7 on WGN. Ladies. From the daring mind of Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Richard. Here, here. <laughs> Beauty and the Geek. Series premiere June 1st at 7. Astros two Cubs nothing the Cubs will bat in the seventh against right hander Chad Qualls he's the third pitcher for Houston tonight and he'll face Jeremy Burnett followed by Aramis Ramirez and then Michael Barrett Jeff Gordon in the booth with us and the first pitch is hit on the ground toward first Qualls got off the mound in a hurry and he'll step on first to get the throw from Lamb so one out and Jeff. Welcome to Wrigley Field, and uh, you have a race coming up in uh, Joliet in July. We do, July 10th, uh, Chicagoland Speedway. It's a great racetrack. Uh, should be a great race. That track's really matured over the last four or five years, and should see a lot of side-by-side -side fast action. But uh, this is great, man. I, I, I'm really excited to be here at Wrigley Field. Uh, you know, we, we have some prestigious uh, tracks that have been around. And that's like uh, maybe 30, 40 years. This place has been around for over 100 or so, and uh, this is amazing to be here. Two quick outs for the Cubs here in the seventh. Well, since you mentioned that, I mean, what is your favorite track? Do you have one that you just above um, all the others? You know, uh, I mean, we, we have a lot of tracks that I love that that are that are special for different reasons. Uh, the track in Michigan's, I think, one of the, one of my favorites. It's big, it's wide, it's fast. Uh, just a lot of a lot of racing room on it. But um, you know, one that reminds me of, of Wrigley Field is Darlington. Uh, it's a track, one of the oldest speedways on on the circuit. It, it's uh, just just something to, to be there and be a part of it and I uh, love racing there. And it's Michael Barrett with two outs. And that's a strike. What about Bristol? I heard somebody describe Bristol as like uh, racing jet planes in a gymnasium. You're right. That's the way to describe it. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of jet planes. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a spectacular track. I mean, it's a, it's, you know, it's a little tiny bull ring that, that would easily fit inside this stadium and and there's a hundred and eighty thousand people or something like that it's uh it's really a sight that everyone should should get a chance to see it it's tough to race on though because uh, there's just not a lot of racing room but it is a lot of fun to drive on one and two to count on michael barrett so you're currently third in the point standings jimmy johnson greg biffle but it's still early, right? I mean, do you do you look at the standings at this point? Well, with the new point system that they have, uh, it's all about the next Nextel Cup chase. Uh, the last 10 races are what decide the championship. But these first 26 races that we have are, are important because they, they position you for that championship. As long as you're in the top 10 within 400 points of the leader, then that's, that's you know, you're, you're looking good. So right now we're in great shape. I'd uh, like to just get that momentum going, get that chemistry going even more with the race team and, and win some, some races. And, you know, we've won three already this year, but they've, two of them been on restrictor play tracks. And the, the championship's going to be won on, on tracks like here, uh, you know, in Joliet, the mile and a half. It'll be a quick one, two, three, seven. Jeff, thanks for the time. We really appreciate it. Again, welcome to Wrigley, and uh, good luck the rest of this season. My pleasure. Uh, good to be here. Jeff Gordon, NASCAR superstar, two to nothing Astros after seven. All right. Hey, you guys want a Bud Light? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's my new Bud Light bot. Check this out. It runs entirely on Bud Light. I gotta give me one of those. <laughs> Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. Honey, the Bud Light bot's creeping me out again. It's all here. 
It's happening now. The Dodge Memorial Day sales event, where we'll give you up to a $4,000 cash allowance plus a $1,000 made bonus cash, or get 0% financing when you buy a Dodge. Plus, make no monthly payments until November. And get great deals on any Dodge, including the Grand Caravan with stow-and-go seating and storage, Ram with available Hemi power, the all-new Dakota, the versatile Magnum, and the big size and smooth ride of Durango. Hurry to the Memorial Day sales event. Offers end May 31st. And so do we. Play Illinois Lotteries Road to Riches. There are eight hot new games and over $150 million in available prizes. There's even a second chance. You can win a key to a brand new car and cash. So go ahead, play Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. A memo went out. Did you get it? It's calling for an end to individuality. It says that movies should be formulaic. It demands a style be ordinary. And sedans, well, they should just blend in. No leather interiors, or navigation systems, or powerful V6 engines. Funny. We never got that memo. Well, it comes with just two hits through seven innings against Roger Clemens and company. So the bullpen will try to keep the Astros in check for the final two innings. Will Ullman, the left-hander, will face Willie Tavares here in the eighth inning. And the left-hander ready to work. Bunted foul. Tavares singled and stole a base in the fifth inning. One for three tonight, one for six in this series. Self and then Biggio for the Astros here in the eighth. Roger Clemens had to leave after five due to tightness in his right groin. The Cubs have not been able to take advantage of the last two innings offensively. Well, once again, a solid outing by Sergio Mitre. If you would ask Dusty Baker, Larry Rothschild, uh, would you take seven innings of Five hit, five strikeout, one walk, two run ball from Sergio tonight. Absolutely, they would have taken that. It's the leadoff walk in the fourth inning, always a precursor to bad things, walking that leadoff man, and then that double that got up in the wind and confused Jason Du Bois out in left field. That set the stage for the two runs that the Astros have scored in this game. And while the Astros haven't won a game when trailing after six, they're 14 and 0 when they lead after eight. Brad Lidge, their closer. Full count on Tavares. Has great stuff. Fair ball. It'll be extra bases for Tavares as Du Bois chases it down. Easy double. The one thing about a guy like Tavares hitting a double, because of his speed, I mean, even if he hits a single, there's a chance that he'll end up at second anyway. Just inside the line and once again gets out into the grass and just dies over there in the corner. Du Bois has to come over, flag it down just to hold him to a double. See how the Astros play it here. With a two-run lead, I would imagine they're going to let Self swing away and try to hook the ball to the right side of the field. You wouldn't say Tavares is necessarily in Scott Pesednik's class at this point, but... Boy, when Pesednik gets on first base, you can just about count on him being at second at some point. So Tavares already there with a double instead of the single and the steal. 
And the bunt right out in front of the plate. Barrett will bare hand and get it to Enrique Wilson covering first. So sacrifice for self. Well, perfectly executed. Now we know that Todd Self can put down a bunt. Good form. Keeps the bat at the top of the strike zone. Very level. Ball just gets out there and dies in the infield. The only play Michael Barrett has is to go to first base. Cubs will have to draw their infield in here with Craig Biggio at the plate. Try to cut this run off. Biggio two hits tonight and three chances doubled and scored in the fourth inning singled in the sixth and here comes Dusty so it'll be righty Michael Wirtz to spell Will Ullman here in the eighth inning it's two nothing Houston and we'll be back. Menards, we guarantee to save you big money and provide the best service and quality. Keep your vehicle in peak condition for summer travel with Quaker State Motor Oil. Only $11.88 a case after rebate. Keep all your toys and games running with Energizer Alkaline Batteries. Get a four-pack of double or triple A's, two-pack of Caesar D's, or a single nine-volt for only 99 cents each after rebate. Menards, guaranteed to save you big money. Save big money at Menards. Where are Nigel and Trevor? They're testing the vehicle stability control on the Lexus. Any news? The powerful allure of the RX continue to put the world on notice. See your Chicago area Lexus dealer. Father's Day, the Cubs will offer Cub fans an opportunity of a lifetime. Just say, hey, Dad, want to have a catch at Wrigley? Spend an hour on Father's Day playing catch at the outfield and running the bases of beautiful Wrigley Field. You'll also receive a commemorative T-shirt, a photograph, and lunch in the friendly Confines Cafe. Tickets are $150 per person. And to purchase your tickets, call 773-404-CUBS. Michael Wirtz is on to face Craig Biggio in the infield at the edge of the grass. Everybody in with a runner at third and one out. And a first pitch strike. Appearance number 23 for Wirtz. is looking for his first road RBI of the year. Showed you that graphic earlier. A lot of success for Biggio at home, but not so much away from Minute Maid Park. One and two. Kick in the pitch. He struck him out. Michael Wirtz with a slide piece to get Biggio. Let's pause briefly for station ID. This is America's number one sports station. WGN TV Chicago. And stay tuned for the WGN news following the ball game. In the eighth inning. Now everybody back against Lance Berkman. We have two outs in the inning. There's a pitch by Words. Fastball for a strike. Two 
two strikes. Got a couple pitches to play with here, but you have to be very careful with that runner on third base. You don't want to risk a pass ball wild pitch here. Here it is outside. The Astros are last in the National League in runs, last in home runs. But they lead tonight two zip. Berkman strikes out Wirtz K's two to get out of the eighth inning. Cubs will try to come back. They have six outs to work with. And the bullpen getting the job done here in the eighth. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Non-stop service to 59 destinations all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. destination smell introducing Southwest Airlines new non-stop service to Pittsburgh fly from Chicago Midway for just $29 one way you are now free to move about the country no it's not yours the game's come out in five minutes I know it's not fair no I'm sorry Comcast gives you choices while Comcast digital cable keeps your whole family entertained Comcast High Speed Internet keeps you connected. And right now, you can get both for just $49.98 per month for six months. Comcast, 100% pure broadband. Call 1 888 4 Best TV. Sixty-five horsepower Acura MDX with electronic four-wheel drive. Because you never know what nature might throw at you. Closed captioning for Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Chad Qualls with a very efficient seventh and back out to the eighth. And Jason Dubois shoots one the other way into the right field corner. He's going to stop at second. It's a leadoff double. Well, the first hit for the Cubs since the second inning. And the tying run will come to the plate here in the eighth. Tries to go to that back door sinker, starts it off the plate. It catches a little bit too much of the plate. Jason just goes with it down the right field line. Well, that's a nice piece of hitting right there. Jason has struggled with that pitch throughout the course of the season and then the breaking ball that usually follows that one off the outside corner, but that time goes right with it. Brings up Enrique Wilson 0 for 1 with a walk. Right to left, Du Bois will go back to second as Berkman squeezes. The Astros Making a move, Eric Bruntlett in to play second base for Craig Biggio. But it wasn't part of a double switch because the pitcher, Chad Paul, is still in there. There's Todd Hollinsworth, pinch hitting. It's hard to criticize Enrique Wilson too much because of his lack of playing time and lack of at bats, but. Fly ball to left field is not what you need in that situation right there. Roll over that ball, try to hit a ground ball to the right side, move that runner to third base, at least cut the lead in half this inning. I was just going to ask you before he, he swung at that pitch, when you're down two in the eighth inning, as you see the closer getting up, I mean, if you're down three or four, obviously you're not thinking about moving a runner up, but two runs, you just try to get on the board at this point. Cut it in half. You know, get it to the point where if you get a man on uh, in the next inning, you could you could play some games, move him up, run him up, hit and run, do something. Of course, 
the pitcher's going to make it very tough for you to do that. He knows that that's probably what Enrique Wilson's going to try to do, hook the ball to the right side, so he's going to sink the ball away from him. Hard stuff away, make it tough for him to pull the ball to the right side. One and one on Hollinsworth, who hasn't played a whole lot lately. Jason Du Bois has taken over in left field. The pitch. Hit hard up the middle into center, and the Cubs will get on the board as Du Bois scores, and it's two to one. And now the tying run is on base. Tom Hollinsworth has come up with a couple of big hits off the bench. Remember the uh, game tying hit he had at Pittsburgh last week. Much more controlled swing from Todd Hollinsworth. Doesn't try to overpower the ball. Just good, quick hands through the hitting zone, right back up the middle of the field. And once again, watch this ball die on the outfield grass. Tavares with a long way to run, playing very deep in a no doubles defense, and absolutely no chance to throw out Du Bois. You get the feeling with Lidge warming up. Whenever he's ready, Phil Garner might go to him here in the eighth inning. The Astros have lost six in a row. And if you try to think from the Astros' perspective, they're two and twenty on the road. And if Phil Garner thinks this inning's starting to get out of hand, he might go with his closer right here. Tosses down in the bullpen, a number of pickoff throws to first base. Lidge is cranking it up in a hurry down there. Garner will probably take a real slow walk up here. Looks like he's going to make a double switch. So Phil Garner will head out after conferring with Wally Bell. It is going to be Brad Lidge, so he's going to try to get the final five outs tonight. It's 2 1 Houston Cubs threatening here in the eighth. Bold design. Awesome power. The freshest SUV line of any manufacturer. This is Nissan Now. Get great offers like a $339 a month lease for 39 months on the Nissan Pathfinder. This is the Nissan Now sales event. Hurry, offers end May 31st. Supercharged. It's equipped with a sport tuned independent suspension, 16 inch alloys, and a 200 horsepower dual overhead cam V6. Any questions? Yeah. How'd you get the sports car in there? Zoom, zoom, zoom. People are getting the message Mazda's on the move with Mazda Tribute. For a limited time, get up to $4,000 cash back on the 2005 Mazda Tribute S. So you'd better get on the move to your Chicagoland, Northwest Indiana Mazda dealer now. Well, once again, check out our WGN Sports Baseball blog, WGNTV.com, brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. We've got a lot of suggestions for the uh, word of the day. And talk about a few of those coming up on our next WGN telecast Orlando Palmero is in to play left field and it's a closer Brad Lidge runner at first comes her down a run. The 
here's a pitch. And it gets away from Brad Osmus. Collinsworth now in scoring position. Gift wrap base right there for the Cubs with one out in the inning. Obviously, you're not going to give up an out to move him into scoring position. Lidge comes in and fires a wild pitch in the dirt all the way over to the Cubs dugout on the third base side. Now Hollinsworth in scoring position for the top of the Cubs order. Lidge, by the way, eight for nine and save opportunities. A lot of strikeouts. For Brad Lidge, 1 0 pitch. Another one bounced up there. Bob, is it ultimately up to the pitcher to tell the bullpen coach when he's ready? And the reason I asked is he did start getting loose here in this inning. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the pitcher will tell the coach he's ready to go. Uh, you know, you know about how many pitches as a coach that it takes each guy to warm up but on a cold night like tonight it may take a little longer. He may feel like he's ready to go in the ball game, but obviously he's struggling with his command here. Two pitches in the dirt out in front of home plate and one way high to Jerry Harrison. Because as you mentioned the, the Astros were clearly trying to buy some more time for Lynch to get ready. And Phil Garner took that long slow walk out to home plate. And a lot of times a relief pitcher will tell the bullpen coach with the eight more on the mound I'll be ready to go so he might not be fully ready when he leaves the bullpen but he's counting on those eight more pitches when he gets on the game mound to get him over the top and apparently uh, Lynch could have used about eight more. It's three and oh on Harrison who should be taking all the way. Here's a pitch. Down the middle, 96. Now you mentioned the strikeouts. Lidge averaging 15.2 strikeouts per nine innings this year. Nafi on deck. Base runners here, especially Todd Hollinsworth at second base. You want to work for a big secondary lead and anticipate that pitch in the dirt. Lidge has been struggling with his command, especially the breaking ball. So, as a base runner, you look for it. Anticipate that ball being in the dirt. Try to get yourself to third base with one out in the inning. If he trying to bunt his way on, which he has done a lot lately. He was retired on a 1 3 put out and a bunt attempt in the third inning. Collinsworth at second, Hairston at first, 2 1 Houston here in the eighth. One strike offering. Surrounded by Everett, the throw to third, and they got Hollingsworth. Boy, that is a big time defensive play. Everett and Innsberg teaming up. So they get the force. And it'll bring up Derek Lee. Well, a good play for the Astros, but in all honesty, just a lucky play. Nice play by Everett. But Ensberg is just backing up towards the base. He just accidentally stepped on the base as he was backing up and took that throw. It looked like he applied the tag for good measure. Anyway, it's Derek Lee at the plate. First and second, two outs. Derek with a rough night. He has struck out three times. And a good block by Osmus. I think the reason Ensberg tried to tag is because he wasn't sure he doesn't know where the base is right now. He's just backpedaling and he thinks he's going to have to make a tag. Actually, Hollinsworth's slide forced Ensberg's foot into the base at third. 
Now he's going to apply the tag because he's not sure where the base is, but fortunately for the Astros, he backed right into it. Two and zero on Lee. Bernitz on deck. Here he comes. Two and one. And you could hear the groans from the crowd that time. A hanger. Lidge got away with one right there. Left the ball up and out over the plate for Derek Lee. Boy, that cement mixer slider just spins up there, doesn't really do anything, and Derek just gets underneath it a little bit. Three balls and a strike. Lidge wanted that pitch badly right there, but when a pitcher comes into the ball game and struggles with his command like Lidge has, Umpires are not going to give you borderline pitches, and that was a borderline pitch at best. Big pitch coming up here. Three and one on Lee. Here it is. Three and two. It's the oldest trick in the book, but watch for an inside pickoff move here at second base. Full count with two outs. The runners will be on the move. Make sure he delivers that ball home. Runners moving. Foul back to the screen. <laughs> These are the moments fans come to the ballpark for. Your best hitter at the plate. The other team's best pitcher on the mound. Tying run in scoring position, winning run at first base. Everybody here at Wrigley Field on their feet. Another three, two, and another foul. Power against power here. Lidge going with a couple of fastballs. Back three in a row. That lead a swing and miss on the three one. is loaded on the walk to lead. So no wild pitch because the runners would have moved up anyway. First on the move at second base when he sees that ball get away he rounds the base aggressively at third until he sees where it ends up. Slams on the brakes, but once again, got to be heads up as that base runner at third base right now. Lidge has been throwing every other pitch in the dirt. Oss was chased all over the place back there behind home plate. Be ready for the wild pitch. So it's Jeremy Burnett at the plate. Where the base is full of Cubs. Sold for two against Lynch. Still showing confidence in that slider, even though he's bounced him in the dirt consistently. On an 0 1 count, a good fastball count normally, and a guy's got a 96 mile an hour heater, but he goes to the breaking ball, gets the swinging strike. Base 
Nice hit. Tie game. Cubs will try to take the lead. Here's the throw. It's going to go toward third. Save. Jeremy Burnett's with a two-run single, and it's 3-2 Cubs. comes against Brad Lidge here in the eighth. One of the toughest closers in the National League. Burnett's just tomahawking a high fastball just past the diving Mike Lamb at first base. Well, once again, that outfield grass slows it up just enough so that the Astros do not have a play on Navy Perez. The throw goes to third. They try to add some insurance now. And even if Lee had been thrown out, I believe Nafi had already scored that third run. One and one, Boy Burnett's with a two run homer last night, adding some insurance for the Cubs, and he gives them the lead in the eighth tonight. Continues his hot season against this Houston ball club. So Lidge has blown his second save of the year, and he really has been all over the place. He has walked two in this inning. A couple have kicked away from the catcher Osmus. And Ryan Dempster. Ready for the ninth. So the Cubs were able to get to Jose Mesa in the ninth inning twice in Pittsburgh last week. The old fake to third, look to first. Does doesn't work very often. Every now and then you'll catch us a napping base runner over there at first. Well, Otis Elman. Comes clubhouse manager, the bat boy for the third straight game. That one is foul. And the Cubs trying to win their third consecutive game tonight. It would match their longest winning streak of the season. I'll tell you what, you think about the top of this inning. How about Michael Wirtz coming on and striking out two to get out of the, the inning with no runs? Clemens will get a no decision tonight. So will Sergio Mitre. Mitre went seven innings tonight. Five hits, two runs. It might be a good time to attempt a stolen base here for Jeremy Burnett's two strikes on the hitter. Lids just. Got away with a high fastball that was fouled straight back. More than likely, he's going to go back to that hard slider. The pitch he's bounced in the dirt all in it. Able to just get a piece of that one. Not only has Lidge struggled with his command, but he hasn't gotten swings and misses with two strikes. I mean, he's a strikeout pitcher, but does not have a strikeout here in the eighth inning. Well, the Astros were unblemished and still are with leading after it. Very different story when they trail. And through the catcher Osmus, Derek Lee will score. Big insurance run. It's now four to two. Tough duty this inning for Brad Osmus behind the plate. A guy on the mound throwing close to 100 with a fastball. No idea where his breaking ball is going from pitch to pitch. 
This one over in the left-handed batter's box just gets underneath the glove all the way to the backstop. That's a big run right there. He may be in uniform for a long time. <laughs> Pitch allowing that fourth run to score all four runs for the Cubs tonight coming here in the eighth inning against Qualls and Lidge. Three, two, high in the air, and it's self toward the line, foul ground, and a nice running catch. And that ends the inning, but the Cubs get four to the ninth. They lead by two. The two hour season finale. A One Tree Hill so big, <laughs> it will take a full night to tell. And one of them, your father can burn in hell for all I care, will get their revenge. Game over. The two hour season finale. One Tree Hill. Wednesday night at 7 on WGN. I can't believe Kyle turned on these tickets. I know, right? Let's hit him up. <laughs> Hey, that's your apartment. That's your Bud Light. That's your girlfriend. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Sharon? <laughs> yeah, she's sharing all right. are running out for Hyundai's Race for the Record sales event. And your Hyundai dealers are out to set a record with deals like up to 2,500 cash back or 0% APR on select models, including the Hyundai Santa Fe, winner of Strategic Vision's 2004 Total Value Award. Day after day, Hyundai's award-winning quality lets us offer America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. The race is on. Hurry to Hyundai's Race for the Record sales event for Memorial Day weekend at Hyundai. Get to your Chicagoland Hyundai dealer for Memorial Day weekend for up to 2,500 cash back or 0% APR. A big eighth inning for the Cubs. Four runs, and they now lead 4-2. And Ryan Dempster will try to close out the Astros. Some changes for the Cubs. Hollinsworth stays in and plays left. And Corey Patterson comes in to play center. So Jerry Hairston, who started the game in center, moves closer to home plate and will play second base. Ryan Dempster with a four-pitch. One, two, three save last night. And got three ground ball outs. Well, we said it was a big boost for the Cubs to get Roger Clemens out of the game. You didn't care who came in out of that bullpen, but you certainly didn't think it was going to be Brad Lidge that they blew up against. One ball no strikes on Mike Lamb, who's 0 for 3. Bernitz with the two run go ahead single. Was Jeremy hit the last home run that's been hit off Roger Clemens in Houston at a big night that night he went three for three against Clemens well, that Mike Lidge we weren't sure if he was totally loose when he came into the ball game there's no question Ryan Dempster is ready to go he was throwing the entire top half of the ninth inning or rather the bottom half of the eighth inning while the Cubs were hitting. They had plenty of time. Two and two. Kick and a pitch. Full count. Of course, a base runner puts a tying run at the plate for the Astros here in the ninth. 
They love getting that extra run to make it a two run lead. And the Cubs were able to do that on a wild pitch. Thirty eight thousand eight hundred five. In the friendly confines tonight. A little uh, patch of clover behind home plate. And it's Hairston to take care of Mike Lamb. So Jerry Hairston, who went from center to second, the ball always finds you. <laughs> it sure does. And he made the play. You change positions or have a player playing out of position, inevitably that other team's going to hit the ball right to him. Well, our producer of Cubs baseball on WGN is Pete Thomas. Skip Ellison is our director. Mark Brady, the associate producer. Morgan Innsberg standing in against Dempster. Executive producer of WGN Sports is Bob Forwall. Thanks as well to our booth AD, Angie Adocio, our production assistant, Tom Chikaki, and our studio coordinator back at WGN, PJ Cruchel. The Cubs hold on tonight. We'll have a chance to not only sweep the series tomorrow night, but also to get back to 500. And he struck him out. Three beautiful pitches from Ryan Dempster. A get ahead slider for strike one, and then two nasty pitches just off the outside corner. And two swinging strikes. So Ryan Dempster trying to make it four straight saves. And he's one out away. Boy, I love seeing him throw strikes. Two bad ones to start this inning, but he has been firing bullets since. who was chasing wild pitches behind home plate in the eighth inning is on deck. Be bad if Everett reaches. He's trying to send the Astros to their seventh consecutive defeat. Side Ramirez picks, throws, and this one's over. Another one, two, three, ninth inning for Ryan Dempster. Got some help from his third baseman to end it. And the Cubs with a big come from behind win tonight. They were down two to nothing into the bottom of the eighth, scored all four of their runs. Sergio Mitre went seven, a no decision, but he pitched very well tonight. And how about the defense to end it? Uh, great play by Ramirez. His range was cut down because he was playing shallow to guard against the bunt, but was able to move quickly to his left, smother that ball, get up and make a strong throw across the infield. Ryan Dempster appreciates it. So do the fans here at Wrigley Field. Jeremy Burnett's with the game winning hit in the eighth inning. More to come from Wrigley. 4 2. The final. Minutes away on WGN News, a Skokie man kidnapped and possibly killed in Iraq. Al Qaeda says they've got him, but his family says they've made a terrible mistake. And taking your dogs outside is anything but a walk in the park on the Gold Coast, a one-man crackdown on Chicago's leash law. Plus, NASCAR racer Jeff Gordon stalls out in the seventh inning stretch. What happened? Those stories in Tom Skilling's forecast after the game.
car expert. But I know what I want. I know what I want. More bang for my buck. Bang for my buck. That's why I got it for Rimza by Suzuki. During Suzuki's More Bang for Your Buck sales event, more and more people are discovering Forenza with more room and more features than Civic. Plus, it comes with the peace of mind of America's number one warranty. More bang for my buck. Who said you can't have it all? Get more bang for your buck with 1.9% APR and 750 customer cash on Forenza now.